Hi everyone, thank you for tuning back in to part two of the VFR. I just want to take you through some of the things uh, since the last broadcast. Uh, you can see here these panels are getting uh, ready to repair those. Uh, as far as the VFR is concerned, I can't get rid of the flashing red light. And over time, after I started, the bike started to run rougher and rougher. There's a lot of black soot in the, uh, in the exhaust pipe, which means that most likely the engine can't calibrate because there's something wrong with the actual FI system or the system of controlling the fuel air mixture, etc. So uh, I've had a few nice comments from the VFR community on Facebook to say that uh, I should check this uh, ground again because I'm a little stumped to be honest. But in the meantime, you can see I've added some extra little bits here. This is a, an extractor system which runs around and out of the spray booth area with its own fan. So I can now work in here without getting uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, uh, which is great. So I just lower that down over the exhaust and it seems to do the trick. But for the moment, time, let's uh, get on and um, I hope you enjoy this and if you do please subscribe uh, I've got lots of other projects uh, that I'm doing this is this bike is uh, one of them I've got a Norton Commando and you can see parts of it on the table and uh, that's going to be a good one too to get finished so hopefully you'll stay with me and um, enjoy it Whatever you see on uh, YouTube about how to repair plastic uh, using plastic weld, chemical, anything chemical, anything epoxy on plastic, um, don't. Uh, the best way is to melt. If it's a thermoplastic, it can melt. Thermoplastic means it, th it changes with heat. So you can do it provided you don't go beyond the specified temperature that uh, keeps the viscosity of the material and then solidifies again. You can keep going all day long. You can manipulate that plastic any which way. That's how they mold. They grind, you know, you've heard of re-grind plastic. Well, they'll take um, plastic objects, grind them into pellets, and then put them in the hopper again. Yes, it does degrade over time, but uh, generally speaking, this is how you would repair plastic, is with plastic and nothing else. All these buses were broken off, all of them. So extensive damage done, I can only assume from, a, from an accident. And I'm missing that central door. So I feel confident enough I'll make one. This upper cowl is made of, and it always is in the mold. You'll see it says here, PE stands for polyethylene and ABS. So it's a combination mixture. It's a regrind, most likely, of these two materials. Possibly as a res for uh, flexibility. I use this as my donor. Um, so I use that as my filler bond. You can see that it is already melted off, but it bonds really well. Uh, it's very important that the type of plastic you use doesn't degrade into a crystalline form when you apply heat, some plastics do. Others just melt nicely and then solidify again like they were before. But you don't want to overheat or put the, the soldering iron on the area for too long, otherwise the material will degrade past its uh, specified temperature, which will degrade the plastic and become brittle. So that's very important there. So here now I've got this little bit here I've just spotted. So I'm gonna quickly repair that for you is we make a little hole it's fairly deep in like that yeah then we draw a line through the middle and then we fill it excuse my shaking and all that it's really tricky and then we do a filler and you the idea is to get both the both the filler and the part you're filling into to the same temperature Otherwise, the 
fill will just come right off. Okay? It's as simple as that. I'm going to put some filler in. So let's just warm this up. So I make a channel again where I was working. And then while it's still warm, you've got to work fairly quickly. I want to bring some of the new plastic in and then make sure that the both are nicely warmed. It's not essential that you get it perfectly level because you can sand it off afterwards. And that's it pretty much. Okay, you can see there's a deep crack that comes from over tensioning. So I'm going to repair this for you. I'm going to make a hole. Um, I'm going to make several small holes through the center. We're going to try and just push down to what you think is almost to the other side. It's very important that you go in as deep as possible, but not through. And we just sort of mash everything together, nice little holes like that. This is stage one, okay? You want to just punch a lot of holes in there. Get the plastic warmed up. Now, we drive a channel through. And we've got to work fairly quickly. Responding really well. Now we put a bit of compression on it. So now we're pushing the plastic in. Try not to affect too much of the area surrounding the shape because it's in there in perfect order. We really just want to get this whole section bonded. Now this one doesn't look like it doesn't even need filler in it. It's, um, I managed to get enough material. So now you can see the crack is still on this side. Um, so again we go straight in to the crack. Melt that crack together. is to get it warm go all the way to the end where you see the paint deformed and let's just mush it all together all right there we are repair is done missing that central door so I feel confident enough I'll make one because I'm not paying the stupid money they ask for.
Okay, so with, after all that work, um, the only thing I can take away from this is that I've got rid of the deep scratches. Um, the shallow scratches, however, is just um, not coming out. When we get to the back to the bodywork, once the other bits are done, then we're going to re revisit these and get these done properly. So here, here you can see I'm getting... Uh, a little bit of the coaching. How would you do something like that? I will do it by sections. I will divide these in four, something like that, mm. and or even in six if you just take the corners as the different areas. And I will polish just one one square, then the other, then the other, and at the end, just at the you end, mean, if you want. Sorry to say, yeah. finish, finish one square, finish it. Yeah, finish completely. It. Yeah, completely. And, and then, then even with the polishing and everything, you check that it's nice. Okay, then move to the other one, and you just blend it a little bit with the other one and at the end if you want to be like 100 percent perfect yeah. the only thing that you have to do is just take 3000 mm. just key it one more time all of it mm. and then just polish it a little bit all of it so then it, you will remove any line that you could see between Massive your difference stuff. already good okay oh, get the block on as well let's see Nope. Ah. 